Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will see the second isomorphism theorem. So, let us begin with uh, recalling uh, what we proved in the earlier uh, class that is the first isomorphism theorem. So, so here is a recap. So, this is called first isomorphism theorem. So, this is somewhat most fundamental result in isomorphism theorems. So, suppose if you have a, a surjective function, let us state it this way. So, phi is a group homomorphism which is also on to. So, phi is group homomorphism. So, then we have this kernel and image which is g dash. Okay. So, the kernel of phi so, which is those x and g such that which is mapped to identity element inside g dash. So, then you can actually formulate this quotient group. Okay. You have diagram like this. You have from g to g dash you have phi and then you have this natural quotient g modulo kernel phi. So, this is again surjection. Okay. So, let me denote it by the quotient phi, sorry the quotient let us call it pi. So, this is the quotient map. So, then what we proved indeed, uh, we proved that there exist a map from this g modulo kernel phi, okay, which we called it as phi tilde okay, such that this is an isomorphism. So, if you talk in terms of diagrammatic language, so we say that this diagram indeed commutes and not only that this phi tilde is, a, is indeed a isomorphism that is part of the theorem. Okay. So, what is the meaning of this diagram commuting? Okay. Let us uh, rewrite here. So, g 2 g dash you have a map and then you have this quotient map from g to g modulo kernel phi. So, then you have this induced map phi tilde. So, just saying this phi tilde is induced from this phi. So, that is the same as saying that this diagram commutes. So, that means if you take an element inside g. Okay, so, let us take some element x in g and then look at its image under phi. So, that will be element here inside g dash. Okay. So, then obtaining this image phi x. Okay. So, you have other way to apply, obtain this. Okay. You can go down from g to g modulo kernel phi. So, there you will be mapping to pi of x and then this pi of x will be mapped to some element under phi tilde. Okay. So, there will be phi tilde of pi of x. So, we expect that that is same as this pi of x. So, that is the meaning of this diagram commuting. Basically, this phi tilde is induced map from phi that is what it means. Okay. So, in a more precise way using the definition you can see that if you actually look at the image of some given element x in g, there are two ways to look at the image. One is straight away look at the image under the map phi. So, that is mapped to phi of x. So, then you go to this x to the image of that x under pi and then, then take phi tilde. So, that element should be same as phi of x. Okay. So, note that what is phi of x that is by definition x into kernel phi and uh, if you recall the phi tilde of x kernel phi is defined to be phi of x. Okay. So, that is why this diagram is committed. But the statement of uh, the first isomorphism theorem indeed says this phi tilde is indeed isomorphism from g to g dash. So, is on isomorphism. 
so the way i stated i stated uh, the map phi tilde sorry phi tilde is from g modulo kernel phi so i stated it as g modulo kernel phi 2 the image of phi but here i have assumed to begin with uh, the map is on to so the image is g dash so so one can rewrite the first isomorphism theorem as this okay no issue and we have seen various applications of this first, first isomorphism theorem okay so now uh, we will prove the second isomorphism theorem as another application of uh, this first isomorphism theorem okay so what is this second isomorphism theorem about okay so that that is about understanding something about subgroups and normalizers okay so let me just state the uh, theorem okay before that uh, let let me just tell you what are all the things that are involved in the second isomorphism theorem and how to remember that okay this is also called diamond isomorphism theorem so why that name comes so once i draw the picture it will become clear so basically the second isomorphism theorem involves let us say two subgroups call it capital A capital B. So, G is given group and capital A and capital B they are given subgroups. So, now you assume that this A is indeed subgroup of the normalizer of B. Okay. So, I will tell you in a minute why this condition is very important. Okay. So, basically we are looking at these two groups okay so let me draw this diagram so you have a you have b so you have g sitting on the top okay so naturally you have this set ab that is there in between this uh, a and b okay a is contained in ab and as well as b is contained in ab okay that is all i am saying so note that a is contained in a b b is contained in a b okay what is a b recall a b is nothing but all those products small a small b where a is coming from capital a b is coming from capital b okay so now so a priori this a b okay need not be subgroup inside g okay but it will be nice if it is a subgroup okay in that situation we can actually connect these things with the following things okay so you have this another group which is which is lying at the bottom okay so that is contained in this a intersection b so i am putting this uh, uh, line segment okay whenever the inclusion happens okay a intersection b is contained in b a intersection B is also contained in capital A and similarly capital A capital B both are contained in AB and AB is contained in G. So now I want this AB to be actually subgroup okay and one can note that under this assumption okay when A is contained in the normalizer of B so then this AB becomes naturally BA so in that case AB becomes subgroup. Okay, that is why we need this condition A being subgroup of the normalizer of B. So, in that case we will prove that okay, this A intersection B will become naturally normal subgroup of A and B will become naturally normal subgroup of AB. Okay. So, then we want to compare what happens with uh, AB modulo B and A modulo A intersection B. Okay. And indeed the second isomorphism theorem tells you that these two are isomorphic. So, this is the statement of second isomorphism theorem. Okay. Okay. So, let us try to actually uh, properly uh, prove all these things. Okay. Before stating the proper uh, second isomorphism theorem uh, uh, let me just uh, uh, prove this proportion which i which i actually promised because 
uh, under this condition I told this A, uh, AB becomes a group okay that is the first thing to verify. So, there are so many facts that are there to verify okay let me state it here. So, for example, so AB is a group okay subgroup so that is one thing and then B is normal in AB that is the second statement. The third statement is A intersection B is normal in A. So, all these things we want to actually verify okay. So, then only we can talk about uh, the respective quotients A B modulo B and then A modulo A intersection B. So, let us verify one by one under this condition A is being subgroup of normalizer of B. Okay. So, the first statement okay, assume okay, let A B or subgroups of G such that A is contained in normalizer of B. We already verified normalizer of a subgroup is a subgroup. So, in particularly uh, A will be a subgroup of normalizer of B. Okay. So, then so, this is the proportion what we want to claim we want to claim that A B is equal to B A in particular A B is a subgroup of G. The second thing is B is normal in A B third thing is A intersection B is sub is sub uh, is normal subgroup of A. Okay. So, to remember this statement remember this diamond diagram okay. this looks like a diamond. Na? So, this looks like a diamond and uh, all we are saying that this double uh, lines indicates which one is normal in which. Okay. So, just a pictorial interpretation to remember this statement. Okay. So, let us verify one by one and then see. So, first statement A B is equal to B A. So, we already proved A B is being equal to B A is same as equivalent to A B being a subgroup okay. that is something we verified earlier. So, let us use that. So, now if you want to verify A B equal to B A let us recall the normalizer definition. The normalizer of B is those G in capital G such that G normalizes this B. So, that means the conjugate of capital B under G is same as B. So, that is the definition. So, now it is given that A is subset of N G of B. So, in particularly if I take some element small a capital B A inverse okay, for any small a in capital A. So, we have because a is element of the normalizer a b a inverse will be exactly equal to b. So, what does that mean? That means a b is same as b a. So, the left coset is same as right coset corresponding to this a. So, that means what? That means if I take this a b which is union of small a b a in capital A. So, this will be exactly equal to union of B A, A in capital A. Okay. So, if you just think about it this is exactly B capital A. Okay. So, that proves that A B must be a subgroup. So, the first statement is verified. Now, look at B. Okay. So, note that B is obviously subset of A B because you can write any element B in capital B as identity times B. So, which is in capital A B. Okay. Similarly, A is also subset of A B. Okay. Now, we want to say that B is indeed normal. Okay. So, what we need to verify for that? If you want to say B is normal in A B. So, this is our claim. So, take some X inside A B. So, then look at x b x inverse. So, it is enough to prove one of the characterization says this x b x inverse is just a subset of b. So, this is enough, 
but given x there will be some small a some small b such that x equal to a b okay for some capital a uh, a in capital a and b in capital b okay so this is what we need to check so how do we check this so let's see so let's blindly compute x b x inverse is equal to a b capital b a b inverse so what it is it is a b capital b b inverse times a inverse okay but what is b capital b b inverse since b is in okay b is in capital b b capital b b inverse is going to be exactly b because b is a subgroup okay as b is a subgroup of g so this is something you can check there is no issue so now in particularly if you apply the conjugation of a for this b b b inverse then what do you get you get exactly a b a inverse okay but what is a a capital a is actually coming from the normalizer of b that means a b a inverse is capital b so that says that this is exactly equal to capital b okay so that proves indeed we checked we checked actually this is equal so that proves that for any element x in capital a b okay if you conjugate b by that x then you get b so that means b is normal in capital ab so this proves that b is normal in capital ab so in particularly we can talk about the quotient okay we can talk about ab modulo b okay so let's look at what will be the quotient okay so the ab modulo b how it looks like so by definition this is going to be x b x in ab so this is by definition but how the given x in ab looks like okay any x looks like some small ab where a comes from capital a b comes from capital b so then x capital b will be a b capital b but a b capital b is same as a times b capital b but now b is coming from small b is coming from capital b that means b capital b will be capital b only so then this is exactly a capital b as b is a subgroup of g and b is coming from capital b so b capital b equal to capital b okay so that means anything that you take any coset <coughs> corresponding to this uh, uh, capital b okay xb that is going to be represented by element of capital a only so then this can be reparameterized as a capital b a coming from capital a okay so this is already one such parameterization but now we want to really understand what it is as a group okay can we relate this with uh, something else so here you see already all the elements are already uh, represented by elements of capital a okay but it can so happen that if a b may be equal to a dash b okay so in that case what will happen a inverse a dash is going to be element of b so two cosets can be equal okay that can happen when it will happen it will happen if and only if a inverse a dash should be in capital b but what is the meaning of this this implies immediately a inverse a dash okay so this is first of all element of capital a because both a a dash they are coming from capital a and then a a dash and capital a is a subgroup so a inverse a dash that should be in capital a but it is already in b so that means it is in the intersection so that means so this 
this thing a b equal to a dash b that is characterized by a inverse a dash is being in capital B which is again if you think about it characterized by a inverse a dash is being in a intersection B because a a dash both come from capital A. So, that implies immediately if you look at a a intersection B this coset is same as a dash a intersection B. So, in a way you are relating these two cosets being equal same as these two cosets being equal ok. That is what motivates us to actually look at A modulo A intersection B because two elements in this quotient being equal same as saying that two elements equal in A modulo A intersection B ok. So, what we indeed proved? We proved that if you take two element x ok let, let me just write it uh, using a only. If you take a b a dash b two elements in a b modulo b then a b being equal to a dash b ok let us not write it this way for a a dash in capital A we have a b equal to a dash b inside a b modulo b if and only if we proved a the coset corresponding to a intersection a a intersection b is same as a dash a intersection b in a modulo a intersection b. Note that A intersection B is a subgroup of capital A. So, A modulo A intersection B makes sense, left cosets make sense, there is no issue. Whether it is a group or not that is something we need to check. To check that we need to check A intersection B whether it is a normal subgroup or not ok. If it is a normal subgroup then uh, this suggests that both, both must be isomorphic ok. So, let us see. Uh, why A intersection B is indeed normal in A. So, to check that start with X in capital A and then look at X A intersection B X inverse ok. So, we need to prove that X A intersection B X inverse is indeed subset of A intersection B. So, this is what we need to check ok. So, why this is the case start with some EZ inside A intersection B. So, then look at X EZ X inverse ok. So, big now this X is coming from capital A EZ is coming from again capital A. So, the conjugation X EZ X inverse will be naturally in capital A as X and EZ both are elements of capital A ok. So, this is fine no issue. So, now what is about X EZ X inverse being in B. Note that EZ is coming from B and A is subset of the normalizer. So, that forces that this element should be in B as EZ is coming from B and a is x is in A which is in the normalizer of B. So, this is again by definition ok. So, that means this element x is z x inverse is in both A and B it is in the intersection. So, that is what we need to check ok. So, which is checked that proves that. So, this implies this argument A intersection B is normal in capital A ok. That means, A modulo A intersection B makes sense. So, now how to prove that indeed we have this isomorphism ok. So, for that we need to construct this map ok. Let us construct the map and then of course, need to use the first isomorphism theorem to conclude anything about the quotients ok. So, what is the natural map? 
so you can uh, take this projection okay take a b and then look at this a b modulo b so this is a quotient map okay so this is let's call it pi so this is the natural quotient map take x and then send it to x p so this is something makes sense because b is uh, verified to be normal inside a b so a b modulo b makes sense and this map is a group homomorphism okay this is a group homomorphism and this is surjective group homomorphism now what we can do we can restrict this map to capital a okay because a is being a subgroup of a b we can restrict this map to capital a so then we get a map from a to a b modulo b so this is again a group homomorphism because restriction of a group homomorphism is a group homomorphism so that is something we verified okay so now if you take this map what it is it is actually sending okay let's call this f f of small a is nothing but a capital b note that using our parameterization so we already have this parameterization okay so this says that each element of this ab modulo b parameterized using elements of capital a okay a b a in capital a so that means this f is already surjective map okay so f is surjective so that is not a problem so immediate okay so we need to define and this is well defined map that is clear because it's just a restriction map now we need to verify whether it is a group homomorphism or not okay let's let's check that so let's check f is a group homomorphism then what we need to check f of a1 a2 should be same as f of a1 times f of a2 but what is f of a1 that is a1 b f of a2 is a2 b so f of a1 times f of a2 is a1 b times a2 b but note that we are in the group okay b inside a b b is normal in a b so that tells you that this is exactly same as a1 a2 b okay this is f of a1 times f of a2 but what is f of a1 a2 so that is exactly by definition a1 a2 b so these two are equal now so it's basically this is just a, okay this is a restriction of a group homomorphism so I, okay i unnecessarily verified it is a group homomorphism so it is immediate that f is also group homomorphism surjective group homomorphism okay two things are verified so now using this uh, first isomorphism theorem you can see that a modulo kernel f will be isomorphic to ab modulo b so it is enough to determine what is the kernel the kernel is nothing but those a in capital a such that f of a equal to identity where identity identity inside ab modulo b okay so let's rewrite that this is those a in capital a such that what is f of a that is ab what is identity in ab modulo b that is just b okay so if you just see this this tells you that ab equal to b if and only if a is in b okay that is easy to verify i will leave it to you to verify so then from this you can see that kernel f is those a in a such that a is in b which is nothing but a intersection b so indeed we proved that a modulo a intersection b is isomorphic to a b modulo b so this is something uh, very powerful okay in uh, theoretically speaking it's a very very useful result whenever you have two subgroups they behave nicely 
okay that is a is contained in the normalizer of b then you are able to take the product of those two subgroups which will be again a subgroup okay and then if you take a b modulo b then that will be naturally isomorphic to a modulo a intersection b okay so from theoretical point of view it is very very useful result so later when you study like uh, more advanced final group theory course in the classification of final groups these things will be very use, used very much okay so i will uh, stop here and then uh, i will continue with uh, third isomorphism theorem and some applications of this isomorphism theorem in the next class thank you i will stop here